Welcome again. Right now in our readings, we are at John chapter 1, verse 18. And I'm going to be just dealing with one verse in John chapter 1, and I'm just going to expound upon this verse because there's a lot said right here. I mean, consider the person who's speaking here. This is John, the one who was the closest, the beloved of the Lord, okay? So this is the one that was the closest to the Lord. He is, uh, he's got some mighty revelations here to, to speak, uh, to show us you know, in more ways than one, because he wrote the book of Revelation. And so um, he's got some awesome truths here. Let's get into this. John chapter 1, verse 18. No one has seen God at any time. The one and only Son, and the NU manuscripts read God, who is in the bosom of the Father has declared him. Let's read this one more time. No one has seen God at any time. The one and only Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, has declared him. Now, this might seem to be a little bit of a contradiction here. No one has seen God at any time, but the Son has declared or has shown him. Okay? So, the question is, can anybody see God? Can anybody really see God? Now, let's go over to Exodus chapter 33. I know that some of you know where I'm going with this. This is where Moses was talking to the Lord. Moses was talking to God. We're going to start at verse 18. Moses said, please show me your glory. The word glory here means beauty. So Moses is asking God if he can be found worthy to see his beauty, to see the beauty of the Lord, the glory of the Lord, the riches of the Lord. Okay, let's see what God says in reply. Verse 19. He said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim Yahuwah's name before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. He said, you cannot see my face for man shall not see me and live. Now, I know people out there they say, based upon what John chapter 1 says, and also here in Exodus chapter 33, that it's impossible for anybody to see God. Now, again, John chapter 1, that's not exactly what it says in a very conclusive and absolute sense. It says that no one has seen God at any time, you know, but the Son, the one and only Son, has declared Him or has shown Him to us, okay? You know, the question is, what does this really mean? doesn't mean conclusively, without exception, that nobody can ever see God at any time. If you read on in Scripture, if you study the Scriptures, you will see there are times when God has manifested Himself in such a way that people are able to see Him. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 32. Now, this is talking about Jacob. Jacob just got through wrestling, wrestling with an angel of the Lord all night. Okay? And go to verse 30 here. In verse 30, it says, Jacob called the place Peniel. Okay? The place where he wrestled with the angel. For he said, I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Now, this begs the question. It seems like it says in, in Exodus that no man can see the face of God and live. Okay? Does that mean that it's impossible to see the face of God? The answer is clearly no. It's not impossible. It is very possible to see the face of God. You say, how is that so? Because, you know, Jacob lived here. Well, Yes, he did in a sense, biologically, but in a sense, he died. He died to himself. He died so much to himself that his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. Okay? This is the born-again experience of Jacob. He, the, the old Jacob was completely dead. The old Jacob was gone. And the new man was rose as a new name, a totally new person, not Jacob, but Israel. Why? Because he saw the face of God and he died, died to self, and he was born again. So in John chapter 3, 
you know, a lot of you know about when Jesus said to uh, Nicodemus, you know, uh, you must be born again. And he rebuked Nicodemus for not knowing that. Like, how can you, being a leader in Israel, not know that you must be born again? Consider the fact that the New Testament wasn't written then. How is it that Jesus expected Nicodemus to know about the born again experience? Because of passages like this. Passages like this, where Jacob wrestled with God all night, and he saw the face of God, and he died, and he was born again, okay, as a new creation, as a new creation in Mashiach, as a new creation, new name called Israel, okay? So, yes, it is possible to see the face of God. Let's ask the question, has there ever been anybody else other than Jacob who saw the face of God? Let's go over to Exodus chapter 24, verse 9. It says, Then Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel went up. They saw the God of Israel. Under his feet was like a paved work of sapphire stone, like the skies for clearness. He didn't lay his hand on the nobles of the children of Israel. They saw God and ate and drank. Is it possible to see God and live? Yes, it is. Okay. But when you see God, when you see the face of God, you will die. What I mean is you will die to yourself. The old sinful self cannot survive in the face of God. Your way, everything about you will die. The way you think, the way you live, your lifestyle, um, everything about you will die. And that's what being born again is all about. Jacob was born again. Abraham was born again. Okay. Um, Abraham was born again. He used to be Abra, um, Abram, but then he became Abraham. Avram and he became Avraham. Okay, so he was born again. Jacob was born again. Okay, and Moses was born again. Okay, so let's look at another another passage here. Let's look at Numbers chapter twelve. This is God speaking about Moses. Numbers chapter twelve, verse eight. With him, that is with Moses, I speak mouth to mouth, even plainly, and not in riddles. And he shall see Yahuwah's form. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant, against Moses? Now this is about talking, this is God talking to Miriam and Aaron, okay? Miriam and Aaron, you know, they said basically, oh, look at Moses. You know, he's, look, he can't even talk right. You know, uh, if God can use him, he can use anybody. Hasn't God spoken through us also, you know? God was very offended at that. Okay, how dare you speak against my servant, God said. How dare you speak against my servant Moses? He said, with my servant Moses, I speak to him face to face. So Moses saw God face to face. Say, didn't God say you're not able to see my face and live? Well, yeah. But Moses did see the face of God, and just like Jacob. He saw the face of God. He died and he was born again. Now let's go over to Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 10. Since then, there has not arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom Yahuwah knew face to face. Again, God and Moses were so close, they saw each other face to face. They knew each other face to face. Can you see God face to face? Yes, you can. Okay, no one has seen God at any time in the in the context of carnal, worldly people. Okay, but once you die to self, once you die to the world, once you die to sin, once you're willing to sacrifice yourself, and you see the face of God, you will die. You will die, and you will be born again, and and you will be just like Jacob, just like Moses, where you can say, "I have seen the face of God." Okay, one last scripture here. Now, this is in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. See, going back to John chapter 1, 
you know, where it says, no one has seen God at any time. The Son, the, the one and only Son, has declared Him, okay? So it seems like a contradiction here. And this is exactly what, what, what happens here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 as well. So a lot of people quote 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9, but they, they somehow skip verse 10. They somehow leave that out. Let's read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9, But as it is written, things which the eye didn't see and an ear didn't hear, which didn't enter into the heart of man, these God has prepared for those who love him. Another translation would say, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, neither has it entered into the understanding of man, what God has prepared for those who love him. In other words, you can't even see, you can't even hear about it, you can't understand. It's impossible to see it, to understand it, to hear it. It's just so wonderful, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. But don't forget verse 10. It says, but to us, this is very, very important, but to us, God revealed them through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So this is it. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, mind has not understood, but God has shown them to us. God has spoken it to us. God has made us to understand, okay? And that brings me back to John chapter 1, where it says, No one has ever seen God at any time, but the Son, the one and only Son, has declared Him. So yes, it is possible to see the face of God. And it is my prayer that each one of you, that everybody within the sound of my voice will see the face of God. You have to humble yourself. You have to sacrifice everything. You have to lay yourself down on the altar. Forget about your reputation. Forget about your image. Forget about how people think about you, how people see you, how you look, how you sound, what you say. Forget about money. Forget about everything. Lay yourself down on the altar. Or as Jesus would say, take up your cross and follow him. And he will show you great and mighty things. You will see the face of God and you will be born again. Blessings.